Welcome to the Chamber Weekly Buzz, and today we've got a special edition. We're going to be talking about the Business Expo, and talking about that will be our guest, Teresa Pinto, who's the president of the Chamber, and John Griffin, who works with Allegra, and he's a trade show expert. We've got lots of great things to share with you today. Our show is proudly brought to you by Roger G. Taylor & Associates to show you a lot of the things that the Chamber is doing both for its members and the Twin County area. Let's take a look at some recent activities of our Chamber. Good morning, I'm David Combs, Mayor of Rocky Mountain, and I'm here this morning with uh, Christina and Jerry Barfield, and most of you know them from uh, b and Roofing. They uh, started as a small company, like a lot of small business owners. Uh, they probably wondered if they could make payroll, pay the bills, and, and survive. Well, they've not only survived, they've done extremely well. Uh, they've, they've relocated out here several years ago and keep expanding. And we're not here today because of B&M Roofing, although you'd be glad to get some business out of it, I'm sure. We're here for B&M Waste Containers. This is a new division that they've opened up. And uh, again, uh, they continue to grow. And it's always great for new businesses to open, but it's even better when existing businesses expand and grow uh, in our community. We feel um, very fortunate, Jerry and I both, to be able to have a roofing business for 14 years in Rocky Mount and then start another business, as you say. Um, it is kind of unique. It is a waste container business um, that you do on a short-term um, structure, one to three day uh -huh. rentals. Um, so it is designed for the do-it-yourselfer, really. And so many people are today. Um, so we hope this is a unique outfit that will benefit a lot of people in our, our area. And we have got John Griffin and Teresa Pinto. Teresa, the president of the Rocky Mountain Chamber, and John Griffin with Allegra. And John, I have to say, um, you've done work for me before and, and done a fabulous job. Thank you. But you were with um, Vallette. Leonard Vallette. And That's then right. your business was bought by Allegra or merged with Allegra? That's correct. They were bought by Allegra. Okay. They were. So and all the employees there went uh, to Allegra. How nice. So, so all of y'all had your job security. We did. Well, good. Well, they got a lot of a lot of talent when they bought Valette. Plus, we always well, like, we like to think so. <laughs> well, and I like local businesses buying local businesses, so we all stay here and, and support each other. Long-term chamber members as Valette and mm -hmm. as, as Allegra, of course. And I have to mention that Allegra was the small business of the month um, at some point during this year. That's last exactly year. right. And we celebrated you all. So, Teresa, the mm -hmm. Business Expo, um, a, we're known in Rocky Mount as having one of the best in the state of North Carolina, aren't we? Certainly in the eastern Absolutely. part of the state, but we're famous for our business expos. We Did like to think that? we are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought, oh, am I telling you something? <laughs> oh, really? Um, but it's, I mean, we, no, we are. Um, in, in our own um, chamber, I'd say in our chamber world, yes, uh -huh. we're, we're known as having one of the most well-attended, uh, marketed, well-marketed, and uh, high exposure type of business to business expo um, and I think that's because we have stuck with as we were just talking about off camera that one message it really focuses in on one thing it uh, we try not to do everything for everyone mm -hmm. um, we don't blend in a taste event or anything else so we try to keep the business to business expo unique and and marketing one message but in contrast that this year we are you know, as, I, as I say that we are adding a new event this year um, and it's a unique opportunity um, with my military um, background and, and family having such a strong history with um, serving in the military it kind of was important to me so we're adding a hiring our heroes event but it's not on top of or blended in with our business to business it happens to be happening during the same day and so. what time will that be, and how can people, because as you were saying ahead of time, we've got mm -hmm. two local employers, a new one and an add-on with Hospira and, and Sanderson mm -hmm. Farms. 
who will be looking for major, filling major positions, which is wonderful. And these are veterans who mm -hmm. are returning, and I think it's our responsibility to help them find jobs. They've served us in very meaningful ways. I mean, they they put their lives on the line for us. So what, what will be the, the format for that part, and what will be the hours? We're looking at, there, there's several events going on during this whole day. So we're uh, planning a roll call, what I call a roll call event. And probably, I don't have finalized times because it depends on who, who can be here um, to open up and, and do the opening ceremonies. But uh, somewhere between 9 and 10, we would do what's called a roll call. And that would be where we have our local veterans and legions and um, armed services represented there. And they will call out the names of everyone uh, from the region who has given their life in service to the country. At the Gateway, we want to mention too. Absolutely, it's at the, it's at the Gateway Convention Center. Um, and then we'll go into the Hiring Our Heroes job fair, which is specifically designed for veterans and their spouses, mm -hmm. and or their spouses. So um, that'll be from 11 to 2. Mm -hmm. i got to make sure that I've got that right on this little brochure. Yes, 11 to 2. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then... Um, what they can do is they can register on our site. Uh, any business in the area, outside of the area, can participate if they are looking for um, some new employees or if they have a military-friendly uh, hiring policy. A lot of uh, individuals are really creating those and focusing on that. Um, register through our website. It is free for a business to participate in the job fair. And then separate from that, we'll have the Business to Business Expo from three to seven. Mm -hmm. So the job fair specifically targeted for veterans and their spouses, um, it's a hiring fair for them. And then the business to business expo is for businesses to come out and network, work on those relationships, market their services. And there is an admission of $5 for the public or you have your business card or you have an advanced ticket. Anyone who is exhibiting will get tickets that they can give to their clients and customers or prospects, hoping to encourage people to come out and, and do the networking. Would the uh, potential employers have mm -hmm. to bring things other than literature about their company? I mean, they won't set up a booth or anything, will they? They'll have a tabletop, so it'll, it'll look the same because we're kind of turning over the same space. Mm -hmm. um, so it will look like the business to business expo it'll just be with um, HR managers mm -hmm. uh, they will have an opportunity to actually sit down and talk to these veterans and if ahead of time the uh, veterans uh, and their families will be registering so you know it possibly could be someone at a local business sees a resume and says oh I really want to talk to this person when they come and they hopefully will be able to make that appointment ahead of time and so it'll have a different feel but if you're not familiar with it, it would probably look the same as a business-to-business -business expo. And this was an opportunity that just came to our uh -huh. chamber, and if we didn't seize it for this particular date, it would have been a long time before we would have been able to assist in this very worthwhile endeavor, right? Absolutely. This is a uh, nationwide initiative that the U.S. Chamber started about uh, a year and a half ago, and it's their mission to get one million veterans and or their spouses hired Mm -hmm. um, and they are going around this country doing these and I have a pretty good relationship with the gentleman that is running the program. I knew of its existence and I said, you know, I think the Twin Counties region is really military friendly and we haven't done a lot to, to put ourselves mm -hmm. in the forefront of that and market ourselves as military friendly. So this was just a great opportunity for us to partner with the U.S. Chamber on their Hiring Our Heroes and put a spotlight on this region as being military friendly. And they're very um, well-trained young men and women, too. I mean, they, they've had a lot of, they, it's not just somebody who is walking in looking for a job without a lot of good experience and a lot of good military-based training and yeah, The military and is its world unto its own. And I'm not sure if you're familiar or not with it, John, but you know, they, they come with a skills, anything from engineering to cooking to marketing to finance. Um, you know. One of my son-in-laws is a captain in the Army now, and he just got back from California mm -hmm. and training there and he's getting ready to go to Afghanistan oh, so you. leadership is one of the big things that they teach absolutely so mm -hmm. they come well qualified with a, a skill set that um, you may not see uh, someone coming out of college mm -hmm. um, they come with a lot of work experience um, usually exposure to different worlds and cultures and sure. and uh, a different <clears throat> perspective 
So it's just a wealth of mm -hmm. of individuals that are coming out of service, and I look at it like you know, same thing you said. Uh, basically, you know, they've served mm -hmm. their country. Um, it's a sad statement in my mind for them to come back and and face unemployment. Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah. it, it makes me proud to be part of a chamber, a member of a chamber that, that is making this possible with that, that on October 2nd uh -huh. um, from about 11 to 2 uh -huh. at the Gateway. We're going to take a break. When we come back, John, we're going to talk about the Expo, and you are uh, our expert for setting up those booths. <laughs> so okay. Stay with us. We are the past, present, and the future leadership of your Chamber of Commerce. We are business members focusing on new beginnings, boldly creating our Twin Counties future. Members working toward broader thinking, community reinvestment, and public policy supporting strong business. We are partnerships that create new beginnings. We are business and community leaders working together for a better tomorrow. And this is my time. Coming up soon on The Buzz, Lige Daltrich, Chairman of the Chamber Board, and Teresa Pinto, who's President of the Chamber, will be answering your questions. Go to the email address on the screen and send in your questions, and they'll look forward to answering. Welcome back, John Griffin, Teresa Pinto. John, I let out with that you're the expo and all things trade show. Uh, one of the things that, that you personally have, have worked with clients for years in is setting up the display booths, right? That's right. I think, is it 8 by 10? It's an 8 by 10 booth. Mm -hmm. okay. Pipe and drape, 8 by 10, they'll get a table and two chairs, I think it is. Okay. But we, I would rather we not give them chairs. We don't want them sitting down yeah, behind there, right? Yeah, that's one of the things I'd like to talk about, too. <laughs> I really do not like to see when somebody has set up a table and they're sitting behind the table. That's a barrier. It's a barrier first, and then it's a, it kind of shows, well, maybe they're not so interested in presenting their uh -huh. products. They're just not too involved. Mm -hmm. So I really like to be able to grab them and bring them into the booth. Mm -hmm. You get them out of the aisle, and you can have a nice conversation with them. And maybe have some little incentives, like I think David Combs, our mayor, had Combs uh, yes, to give exactly. away one year. Yes, exactly. That was one of my favorites, uh -huh. actually. Okay, well, I'm coming to you, John, and I'm saying here's my business mm -hmm. what are the questions you will ask me up front well I, I do ask a lot of questions uh, one of the things I kind of do start off with if it's somebody that's getting a new display is I if you'll excuse a computer analogy I divide it up into hardware and software the hardware is the display itself because you really have to decide if you're going to be going just to local shows or bigger shows, mm -hmm. how much space you'll have. Mm -hmm. uh, you can start with a really small tabletop display. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are, there are briefcase style uh, displays, the size of a briefcase, but they open up to about four feet wide, two feet tall. Wow. So that's a nice but little they display. Fold down so they fold down and they're easy to move. And, they're, they're easy to move. and that gets to be a very big deal because you really have to think about the person <laughs> that's setting up the booth. How mm -hmm. long does it take? I mean, I've seen, I've been, I was around for the, mm -hmm. in the old days when a display, I can remember going to Chicago to a trade show where it took them two days to set up. They actually built a house inside McCormick Place in two oh, days. Gosh. That's not the kind of display we're no, talking about. No. Um, there are tabletop displays. Uh -huh. There are banner stands, and you've probably seen those. That's the upside down, upside down window shade. Mm -hmm. It's got a little canister with the graphics rolled up inside it. You put a pole in the back, and then you pull it up. You can use different materials, right? Cloth and vinyl. Is that for those? Well, those, for they different? generally have a, a more rigid kind of film, but when you get to a, a back wall display, a floor uh -huh. model display, you can get the rigid film for that, which mm -hmm. is what most people are familiar with, where you either attach it with Velcro or you hang it from a, a frame. Mm -hmm. uh, but they have stretch fabric now, which is really nice because the, 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 the fabric is actually printed with the images mm -hmm. that go on the display. When you fold it up, you just make sure that the fabric goes inside the display of the grid fairly neatly. Mm -hmm. When you set it back up, it may be slightly wrinkled, but within a few minutes, all the wrinkles come out. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually very popular now because mm -hmm. it's very lightweight, it's inexpensive, easy to set up, and it always looks good. What about expense? Because we're all, I mean, I don't know many businesses, and, and Teresa, you probably hear this all the time. 
well, I've been tightening my belt and, you know, we're, we're riding out the economic downturn. Is there a pretty wide range? You mentioned inexpensive. What? Because how what do you not mean be by scared off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, Where is your price point? Well, here's, here's the thing. I'm thinking about a quarter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, don't uh, know that. <laughs> uh, that won't work probably. Okay. Uh, a, a, a show style display, which is mm -hmm. the little one that, that the briefcase, that's two ninety five dollars for the display itself, $295. The real expense comes in when you start doing the graphics. And this, that's difficult to price because we don't actually know what's going on that until mm -hmm. you and I sit down or I sit down with a client and we talk about it for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've done displays for as little as $500 and I've done displays for $100,000. Okay. I've done displays for a very tiny, where you have just a table mm -hmm. uh, and I've done displays for outdoor booths as big as 100 by 150 feet. We did a back wall display one time, it was 150 feet wide, it was three billboards. These but John, even your on. smallest display, sure. $500. I mean, it's not a one-time shot and the next year you have to change it all. That's right. I mean, how, that exactly. display lasts you, how, how long would you say on average? Uh, you have to change uh, out the graphics, but let's say the mechanics. Yeah, three or four years. Well, the, the mechanics, all these dis displays will last a long time. Mm -hmm. It's the graphics right. that need to be updated. And you can display them in a business too. I've been in businesses Absolutely. and seen your, you know, from the, the expo. The well, the worst thing to do is to leave it in a closet somewhere, uh -huh. which a lot of people do. But design it in, with that in mind, that mm -hmm. you could leave it in your business, in the mm -hmm. lobby, or even in another business, mm -hmm. uh, like the personnel department, the HR department in a business. It just depends on what you're selling. And I have to say, when I came to you to make one that I was going to put in somebody's lobby who was promoting small mm -hmm. businesses, right. I have continued using it on um, two panels. It is so much better than if I tried to have done that. I mean, <laughs> oh come on, folks! You got to realize you're good at one thing, John's good at another, and I really do think if a person tries to kind of put lipstick on a pig, it looks like lipstick on a pig versus a professional job. And that, have you not heard that expression? <laughs> 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 I am is not that a artsy. Southern thing? <laughs> that is a, yeah, well, maybe. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you bring that up because that's, that's one of the issues that I deal with on almost every display. Uh -huh. You take the typical uh, store business owner or manager, uh -huh. they go to a show uh -huh. and they look at all the nice displays, their competitors' displays, and they uh -huh. see all these wonderful things. And what they're looking at is, you know, bright colors, nice uh -huh. clean layout, uh -huh. you know, one or two images. And then they get back home and they call me in and they want to do a display and all mm -hmm. of a sudden they need 20 photographs, mm. all the text in the world, every, every, you know, everything they can say about that product mm -hmm. and that is the worst thing you can do. Everything in the kitchen sink, right? Every, that's Accurate. exactly, it needs to be mm -hmm. uncluttered. I have a saying, uh, a confused mind always says no. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to put a lot of stuff on a display. Uh -huh. Headline, one big wow image, mm -hmm. a little bit of text. Uh, like a billboard. I mean, it's you, if like you can't a catch them, seven, No more than seven words in the headline. Okay. You've got five seconds to catch them. And what I always tell people is that the most you can hope for mm -hmm. with a display is to stop somebody long enough mm -hmm. so that the booth attendant can go out and grab them and bring them in and start talking to them. And then what would be the additional follow-up that you would recommend? Okay, Teresa's walking by and I've got this wow sign that you'd made display with a great picture and seven words and she pauses to look at it. What then would be my follow-up which you also recommend and can do? Uh, you mean specifically what would you what A would you brochure, ask a card, or a what? You're Wait. always going to have brochures, business cards, so forth, and the main thing of course is you want to capture any information, any contact information you can from them. You want to mm -hmm. find out what they're interested in. Mm -hmm. One of the worst things, again, with displays is it's not about what you want to tell them. Mm -hmm. It's about what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. So What's in it for me? It's, that's exactly what they're mm -hmm. thinking. Mm -hmm. And, and forget that. I, I've got a story to tell, so I'm going to plaster it all over my uh -huh. display. It's the wrong attitude altogether. And you altogether. love it, and you're real proud of it. You're very that, proud of it. Exactly. That doesn't mean they're going to stop. And, and this is just one more example, Teresa, and I'm sitting here thinking, they do this. This is their profession. Mm -hmm. Not only do they do a professional job, and I think your reputation is on the line. If you've got something junky there, that oh, yeah. doesn't attract people to think, oh, this is a company I'd like to work for, I'd like to do business with. It doesn't cost that much to get a really good four and five year professional something. Right. It says a lot more for your company. Plus, 
you're the experts. You know what would attract you. I mean, when I came to you, I said, what would attract you, John? I mean, what can I put on this? You're the consumer. I can give you great information. I know all the stuff, but you whittled it down to what would grab people because that's what you're trained to know how to do. That's it. That's it's an it. investment back in your business. You have mm -hmm. to understand, you know, you're not going to go ask somebody who's never touched the underside of your $30,000 vehicle to go in there mm -hmm. and fix something, <laughs> but yet people take $100,000 invested in a business and they'll just figure that they can do that marketing and messaging yeah. themselves. Mm -hmm. You could wreak the same havoc, on, it, but it's on your business. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think you do have to make a little bit, a smaller investment to capitalize on your initial investment in your business, absolutely. And one of the things that I've discovered, and you wouldn't necessarily think about this, but a really nice display, when the booth looks really good, it gives a lot of confidence to the people that are working the booth. Good point. Because they yeah. feel good about it. The uh -huh. last thing you want to do is to be embarrassed and to stand in front of what you put up. <laughs> oh, my God. That's just not a good start. No, it's not. I have to say, October 2nd, um, people don't need to come in the day before and say, I need this tomorrow. I mean, people Well, a little advance notice is good. Yeah, it the is. sooner the better, as people are thinking mm -hmm. now that we've got the date, October 2nd, we've got your Allegra, we've got other chamber members who can do this um, type of thing, even though you're very gracious to come and tell us, give us well, tips on how to do it. Well, they are a partner on it. They're, they're working with templates. I mean, there's a lot as an exhibitor if you register to be a part of this uh, business to business expo they worked really hard on designing some templates because what i wanted to do was help mm -hmm. that person who's not used maybe this is their first expo experience um and they need help in getting their message out so they worked in, and they gave us i believe three or four templates mm, so. that um right. you know and we've all been to conventions mm -hmm. and the exhibitors you'll get cards, postcards in the mail mm -hmm. leading up to the date that you go and it'll say come visit us at Bootsum. I wanted to be able to provide that for our, our members Great. Um, without them putting a lot of thought into it mm -hmm. and it's intimidating if mm -hmm. you don't know anything Kidding. about design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now this is a great opportunity for them to showcase what they're able to do mm -hmm. um, and hopefully our businesses will take advantage of it and, and be appreciative of the fact that it's included in your exhibit. In your exhibit. Okay. And we are out of time. John, okay. Teresa, thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Join us next week and have a great evening. We are the past, present, and the future leadership of your Chamber of Commerce. We are business members focusing on new beginnings, boldly creating our Twin Counties future. Members working toward broader thinking, community reinvestment, and public policy supporting strong business. We are partnerships that create new beginnings. We are business and community leaders working together for a better tomorrow. And this is my time.